Entrepreneurs from around the world have submitted their business ideas to angelsgate.com. The best will get a slice of a multi-million dollar fund, but only if they get past the gatekeepers. Four of Asia's top angel investors. Who will have their business dreams come true? This is Singapore, where the gatekeepers of the Angels Gate Fund have gathered. There's Ken Mandel, digital advertising and technology guru. William Klipgen, internet investor whose company was acquired by Yahoo in one of Europe's largest technology transactions. Patrick Grove, one of Asia's best young entrepreneurs with a portfolio worth over $200 million. And Karan Singh Takral, Executive Director of the Takral Group, a century-old family business that spans the globe. They're here to meet these entrepreneurs, selected by the Angels Gate community. But they're not handing out checks just yet. First, entrepreneurs must do an elevator pitch, literally. They have to excite one of the angels before the lift reaches the top floor. One by one, entrepreneurs drop out of this high-pressure situation. Next into the elevator pitch is Colin Pudsey. At 24, he founded a cleaning service that uses environmentally friendly products. But cleaning is a tough industry. Hi, I'm Colin from Green Cleaners. For two and a half years, we've been cleaning to protect our clients' health without harming the environment. Investment could give him the edge. But is his business worth investing in? How are the margins in this business? It's quite a low margin business, but we aim to be quite lucrative with our franchising package. I like what I've heard. Welcome to Angel's Gate. Thank you. Do I get out or? Colin's franchising system could make him a cleaning McDonald's, where companies pay him to set up businesses under his brand. But will the Angels buy that? Hello, Angels. My name is Colin Pudsey, and I'm the director and founder of Green Cleaners. I'm here today to offer you the opportunity to invest $150,000 in return for a 15% stake in my business. Green Cleaners is the leading eco-friendly cleaning service in Singapore. We've built the best reputation in Singapore and now look to scale our business. We aim to vastly grow the Green Cleaners brand and have an excellent franchising system. We already have our first franchise in Sydney and an increase in demand to expand across Australia and Asia. Lastly, we have our own range of green cleaning products. Let me show you how they work. Colin's green angle gives him a unique selling point and he has three revenue streams from cleaning, franchising and selling his products. It looks like he's in a good spot. What's the revenue split between selling the products and the services of cleaning? In terms of margins with services, it's around 20%, 25%. With products, uh, the, the margin on products is actually 100%. Um, with franchising, the idea is that we, we really have a very, very good brand, a very good reputation, and we want to continue to keep that. So as we franchise, the more franchises we have, the more products we sell because they all use the products on their services, they sell to their own clients. These cleaning products, is this something that you guys have developed or, this, or you've white labeled from some, somewhere else? Or? So our products are all manufactured in the States. Um, they're already an existing product. Um, we have the rights for Asia to distribute them. Colin doesn't own the IP rights to his products, so anyone can license them, sell them and undercut him. That puts another revenue stream at risk too. So basically, you actually franchise the product only. But if you lose the product, you lose the whole franchise, the whole lose everything. The franchises for the services to residential market, commercial market, yeah, and to sell Mainly products. it's the product that they're franchising out of you. Not the, the service, like, I can get it from him or I can get it from anybody. I can learn it from anybody. Uh, when, when someone buys a franchise, they actually get the rights to use our brand, our yes. name. But if you lose territory. the product uh, mm -hmm. contract, then your franchisee contract all goes away at the same time. Am I right? Um, ours, uh, see, Colin, my question is, you're saying you have franchising to Australia and other markets. Actually, you're franchising your product. If you lose a product, how long is your identity for? So, I mean, if, you're, if you lose your product, the guy who's paying you franchisee money, he'll say, I have nothing to pay you. I've learned whatever I learned it from you. Basically, I, I would like to know what, if you lose this product concept and how you're going to start a new one or how you, If your revenue and cleaning is enough to survive your company, and give money back to us? I don't foresee any problems with not hitting those targets or not being able to 
to uh, to fulfill all those requirements. Okay, thank you. The angels now need to talk. Okay, thank you very much. He only have product, not his own, yeah. and uh, the staff they can do it yeah. is easy to follow. And so basically, whoever comes in second, we're going to be very fast catching up with him. And there's a big bet on the future. All the revenues you're talking about yeah. has Agreed. not yet has not yet happened, right? Everything is in the future. But despite his issues, Colin has been able to survive in a challenging industry. And more than the company, I like him. Yeah. He has passion. It's not an easy job to do. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I, th I think starting a cleaning business has got to be one of the toughest yes, things. Just, you know, low margin, and, and you know, and he's persevered. He's he's entered a competitive market. Yeah. He's got an edge, and I think. I think an entrepreneur will never have the right answers at any particular point in time, but he seems to have the strength to find those answers over time. Well, we can we can actually like what okay. we discussed. You know, to be honest, I mean, 150k is not a lot of money. I, know. I mean, you know, I mean, let's sure. let's I, I yeah, think so let's just give him 150k. Sure. Yeah. Let, let, Ask like, for 40. Let, let's just negotiate on the percentage what of the company. That we okay. Yeah. What's our walk away then? Yeah. We think his business is worth around not more than half a million, probably I agree. a little bit less. I agree. Not more than half. So a million. our walk away could be 20. 20. 25? 25. 25? 25. 25. Okay. Yep. Okay then. Let's get him back. We're so-so on your business, but we like you as an entrepreneur. Thank and you. And we'd like to talk to you about making you an investment. So we are accepting your cash for 150, but uh, we want a little bit more percentage than what to offer. What figures do you have in mind? 40%. I think that from from my side of things, I, I have a lot of experience in this, and the, the company we've built so far is an excellent foundation for growth. Is it absolute your requirement to to give us only fifteen percent? If you were all to come on board as part of Angel's Gate, then I'd be willing to go to twenty percent, but that would be the limit. Twenty is a little bit too low for us. I think we're willing to do twenty-five. The choice is yours. Okay, I'd love to have you guys on board. I'm happy. Fantastic. Yes, please. So, what was it like staring down four angels? Join me, Philip Pellet, on angelsgate.com for exclusive interviews with the entrepreneurs. And if you think any of the entrepreneurs had a particularly good idea, go to angelsgate.com and click on their like button. For every like, Capital and Hope Foundation will donate a dollar to charity.